But I did recently move out and get my own place, and I've got a boyfriend at the moment, and sometimes he's there and sometimes he's not. And to be honest, I prefer it when he's not. <laughs> Sex is a lot quicker. Because <laughs> I don't bother with foreplay. And if ever I miss him, I just do a big loud fart, and it's like he was there. <laughs> you know, one of those farts when a line in bed and it sort of hits you in the face. <laughs> it's like a big wave of warmth. <laughs> like you've just stepped off an aeroplane in a really hot country. <laughs> Albeit a country that smells of shit. <laughs> that whenever he comes around, he does need a lot of attention. He basically needs a shit, a shower, sex and sandwiches. <laughs> it's like having a bloody Tamagotchi. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> it's died. <laughs> but even though I'm in a relationship, I still consider myself to be quite sort of independent. And I found come Valentine's Day that cards don't really reflect that. They're all one extreme or the other. They're all either sex buddy or soulmate. There's nothing in between, is there? So it's like, where are the cards for the practical woman in love? Something that says, I love you, we're having a nice time, but if we're split up, I'll probably be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wondered if you could apply the same to get well soon cards. <laughs> get well soon, but if it's terminal, I hope you go in your sleep. <laughs> But I was talking to my mum about the kind of thing that she used to write in Valentine's Day cards to me dad, like 40 years ago when they first started courting. And she showed me this poem that she used to write, and it goes like this. I love you, I love you, I love you almighty. I wish your pyjamas were next to my nightie. Oh. <laughs> don't be mistaken, don't be misled. I mean on the clothesline and not in the bed. <laughs> And I thought you could use that today, though, couldn't you? Just flip the last two. I mean, in the bed and not on the clothesline. I'll shag you, but I'm not doing your washing. <laughs> but I am uh, getting on a bit in age. I'm in my 30s now. Any women in your 30s in? Give us a cheer. Yay! Quite a few of you. Excellent. Because when I was uh, turning 30, I was worried about turning 30. It's quite a normal thing. So I asked a few friends who are also approaching their 30th birthday how they thought it was going to affect them. One guy said it means I'm closer to retirement, which I thought was a good, positive way of looking at it. <laughs> but my favourite answer came from a bloke who said, I just need to make it a 34 and I've beaten Jesus at living. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've got a boyfriend at the moment and it's going really well, but um, I don't really believe in forever. I don't believe in, you know, when people say I'm going to love you forever. I don't like it when songs say I'm going to love you forever. No, you're not. You're going to love us for a little while and then you're going to leave us and you don't really know why. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, but I did read it quite a sad... <laughs> Honestly, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> he was an arse. And, um, <laughs> but this boyfriend I've got is lovely. But I did read a story recently about an old... It was quite a sad story about an old couple in their 80s who'd been together for like 60 years. And it said in the story that the old lady had died and a fortnight later, the old man had died. And it said in the article that he died of a broken heart. He died of a broken heart. No, he hadn't. It's not a medical condition, is it? <laughs> I think I figured it out. If she died and a fortnight later, he died, it's just because he can't cook. <laughs> I think a bloke of that era wouldn't feel very comfortable sort of asking for help either, would he? Hello, hot point. <laughs> I've looked in the oven and there doesn't seem to be any tea in there. <laughs> but I went to um, a friend of mine's recently. She said, come round and I'll cook all your favourite food. And I thought, what a lovely thing to do for somebody. So, of course, I went round and we had a lovely time. She cooked all my favourite food, as promised. And then about three hours later, we're sitting on the sofa and out of nowhere, she just went, I don't think my lady parts look like other girls' lady parts. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> I realised then that the whole night had been a ploy. Favourite food's my arse. Come and look at me funny. Oh. <laughs> I said, I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. 
if you don't on a bit of paper, <laughs> I'll have a look at that. So she drew it on a bit of paper, and I drew mine as well, and they were quite similar, so she was happier. <laughs> she said mine was tidier. I don't really know what that means, but I know I definitely don't want to look at hers now that I know that it's messy. <laughs> but it could have been worse than drawing on a bit of paper, couldn't it? We could have just put some paint on and done a potato print. <laughs> But I have, I have developed a new hobby. Uh, some of you probably already do this. I've started listening into people's conversations on the bus and the train. It's quite entertaining. And I was listening not long ago to two old ladies, and they were talking about what they would do if they were men for a day. And I thought, this is going to be brilliant, because pensioners are, by definition, bonkers. <laughs> but I went out to lunch with a couple of my friends, and I thought, well, I'll ask them the same question. So my first friend, I said, what would you do if you were a man for a day? And without even thinking, she just went, I'd have a wank. Ooh. <laughs> sounded like she needed to, she sounded awfully tense. <laughs> but these old ladies, different generation to me and my friends, in their 80s, and one of them just said, Edith, what would you do if you were a man for a day? The other one said, no, in my luck, I'd get a Tuesday. And what can you do on a Tuesday? <laughs> My second friend, I said, what would you do if you're man for a day? She just said, I just do everything. And I thought she meant like in a sexual way. And I said, is that what you mean? Like you just do everything. And I said, is that what you mean? She went, no, no. Just all the little jobs round the house. <laughs> but I've been, um, I've been trying to go on a diet. It's not, I'm not really very successful. Um, but I find that whenever I go shopping and I can't get into things, you know, when you try clothes on and you the size you weren't expecting to be. I just come home and I put on a song, and the song is Big Girls Don't Cry. You know the song? There's a couple of versions of it. Big Girls, Big Girls Don't Cry. <laughs> Such a load of rubbish, that, isn't it? <laughs> big Girls Don't Cry. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> cry because they're fat, cry because they can't get a boyfriend, and they cry because there's no trifle left. <laughs> But I was on holiday in Spain last year, and uh, I'm bragging, I know, and um, <laughs> outside the hotel was a lovely pool, and I wanted to go in the pool, of course I did, but I'm not overly confident with my figure in a swimming costume, and I was watching the women who were walking in the pool, and these were like tiny, you know, these wafer-thin, tiny women. And I thought, I'm not going to walk in with one of them. If I walk in with one of them, people are going to think I've bloody eaten one. <laughs> and I wouldn't anyway, because there's no meat on them. So what I decided to do instead is just to walk in with the children, because kids are all really fat these days. <laughs> <laughs> if I walk in the same time as a nine-year-old boy who's got bigger tits than me, nobody's looking at me anymore. <laughs> but like I say, I don't have kids, and most of my friends don't have kids, but I think if you ask any woman who doesn't have kids, what would worry them about having kids would always be childbirth. It's quite a reasonable thing to worry about childbirth. From what I understand, it changes your downstairs, doesn't it? It changes your downstairs. I quite like my downstairs the way it is, thanks very much. Certainly don't want a bloody extension. <laughs> but it's bound to change though, isn't it? Because you're forcing a person out. That's what you're doing. You're forcing a person out. I've never forced a person out. I've forced a couple in. <laughs> with a shoehorn. <laughs> no, it was just me thumb. <laughs> You've been an absolute delight of an audience. Let me leave you one. Oh! oh. <laughs> Let me leave you on one final thing. Most generous of you, thank you very much. Let me leave you on one final thing. Somebody recently noticed I have developed something of a cake shelf. muffin top, so I call it my cake shelf. <laughs> call it my cake shelf, because that's where I keep my cake. <laughs> Somebody said to me recently, are you pregnant? <gasps> I said, only if I've been shagged by Mr. Kipling.
for watching. You know, it'd be great. My brand new show, Bobby Dazzler, is out now and available exclusively on my website, sarahmillican.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.